what's up and we are live how you guys doing we are just going to wait till people trickle in and then get kick started i'm just going to make sure that all of my stuff is set up properly just before we jump straight into them plus we got another two minutes to spare so All right, what's up, people? Let's get kick started. Um, so it's seven o'clock. I'm starting to see people trickle in. I'm really excited about this specific particular session uh, because we haven't done one in a while, first of all, and secondly because this is very much well intended for the massive changes that we brought upon when we launched uh, 2.0. Um, so there's two actual massive benefits of being on this webinar. Number one, if you're a early adopter been in Glorify for been using for uh, Glorify for quite some time, then this will get you up to speed. Um, at the same time, whoop, I don't know how my light just went off. At the same time, if you're a um, you know if if you're a new user, then this is also perfect for you because this webinar will get you uh, you know let, let you know everything you need to know about Glorify and Glorify 2.0 specifically, so that you can optimize your workflow to create powerful product images. Now, let me try and fix my lights. Give me a moment here. <laughs> Thank you. 
Okay, that was a little bit embarrassing, but I got my light working again. All right, so people are trickling in. It's good to see. It's good to see. Let's see. Let's just first of all do a quick test. Let's take a minute for everyone to get comfortable. So in the meantime, for those who are here, let me know already if you can see and hear me clearly. And if you can hear me clearly, just drop a one in the chat, please. Okay, that was a little bit embarrassing, but I got my light working again. All right, so All right, people, can you hear and see me clearly? Just drop a one in the comment section. I'm staring at this comment section and just say hello. I want to know where you guys are tuning in from. Awesome, awesome. Hey, Alexi. Hey, Fong. Hey, Daryl. How you doing, my friend? Sheikh Abdul, how you doing, my, bro my, my, my brother? How you doing? Guyen, always good to see you, my friend. Thomas, how you doing? Marilyn, how you been? Awesome, awesome. Let's get cake started. I'm really excited that everyone's trickling in and we can jump straight into it. Um, now, first things first, you know, I'm really excited that everyone from all around the world, in fact, is tuning in. We've got, uh, Guyan was telling me earlier that he's tuning in from Vietnam at 1 a.m., which is just brilliant, you know, uh, to see people committed to come on this webinar. It's just, it's just really uh, overwhelmingly um, humbling for me. Um, and now, yeah, so we can, you know, we can get straight into some of the intros. I want to, first of all, uh, you know, let you guys that let you guys know that coming into this webinar uh, really, truly shows me that you are really serious to take your e-commerce or digital business to that next level. And really, that's what this webinar is about. It's about how to use Glorify in the best and most optimized way to achieve great results in your uh, designs of your campaigns, you know, and everyone knows that if you design beautiful campaigns, you know, that are in line with your audience and your product offering, and at the same time differentiating with your competitors that are out there in a very overwhelm overwhelmingly competitive market that we live in today, then it's no brainer that if you're able to achieve that, you can, uh, you know, make your, you, you can drive sales towards your business like you're selling hotcakes, in fact. So, I'd really love to know from you guys watching, you know, what stage are you in at in your business at the moment? You know, I'd love to know whether you're in the early stages, you're more established, maybe you're an enterprise. You know, I'd, I'd love to know those details. Drop it in the chat. I'd love to hear where you are at. Now, just to reiterate, who is this webinar for? Uh, I didn't mention this in the beginning, but for those who are just coming in right now, this webinar is perfect for, doesn't matter what stage your, uh, your business is at, you still need to create beautiful campaigns. Whether it's you as a CEO, main stakeholder of the business, or you have a VA, you have a team member or graphic designer, Glorify is really a all-purpose platform for an e-com, starting with an e-com business, but even we're wor working on creating digital uh, templates for digital business and service base, right? But the entire idea and the premise is to glorify your business, glorify your product offering so that you can make sure your campaign reaches your customer with a powerful impact, right? And that's what this is all about. Now, whether you're a power user, like I said in the beginning, um, if whether you're a power user, this live session will go through the entire 2.0 workflow, which is great. If you're new or if you, even if you're sitting on the fence, you haven't jumped into Glorify yet, then this is also going to um, you know, uh, really, really help you guys because I'm going to show you my process on creating really engaging product imagery using Glorify. And that is really what Glorify is built for. Now, I want to promise you a couple of things. Uh, what we're going to be talking about today, well, this is actually part of the uh, the agenda, if I can get to the agenda. Sorry, I just accidentally skipped a slide. There we go. Okay, for some reason, doesn't want to go to the agenda slide. Sorry, guys, my slides are being a bit buggy today for some reason. 
Okay, well, we're gonna skip the agenda slide. Hope that's okay. But the agenda today is number one, I'm gonna, there's three parts of the agenda. There's finding the right template, okay? You know, how to take any product and find a matching template for it on Glorify and then follow up by creating a powerful, uh, engaging banner that is in line, more than anything, in line with your product. Uh, so number two is, you know, once you pick that template is how to re-customize it. All of them templates are modular, but you need certain principles to then take a template and make it your own. And that's what I'm going to show you in this webinar. That's number two. And number three, how to efficiently create a campaign using Glorify at scale. Once you create that first banner, that's all it takes. What, what we like to say is that the first banner that you create is the first dragon you slay as an entrepreneurial knight in your journey of trying to push your product out to the world, right? So once you create that first banner, then really everything gets much easier and you can efficiently create your uh, campaign at scale. We've always found this uh, as, a, as, a pro, as, as a designer working professionally for quite some time um, and you know working on multiple, well, in fact, I've lost count on how many different product campaigns I've worked on. It, all it takes is to work out what is that first look and feel, uh, design look and feel for any marketing asset. If you work that out, then you can, you can multiply that and use that same kind of source design uh, as your reference point to create assets at scale. So that's what we're gonna be doing. Now, just before we get into the good stuff, I wanna quickly, for those of you guys who don't know me, uh, enough. I know a lot of people of you guys in the early adopter, um, you know, the, the early adopter uh, user base that had jumped on much earlier have been interacting with me for well over a year now. And, uh, but for those of you who are new to Glorify, you know, it's important that you know, you know, where, where, where did I come from, you know, like in terms of my entrepreneurship journey and what made me, uh, you know, inspired me to create Glorify in the first place. And now, um, I am a digital slash motion designer. I've been based in London. I've been, um, I caught the entrepreneurship bug quite, quite some time, quite some time ago. And I was lucky enough to catch it and then um, stumble upon my first, the first business model that drew me in, which was the Amazon FBA model. For those of you who don't know what the Amazon FBA model, it's a really simple e-commerce business model where you source products from China, you ship it over to Amazon uh, and you sell it under your own brand. And now what you could say is the unfair advantage that I had over other competitors in this business model is that I was, as a digital designer, I was able to design my own product imagery and really kind of try to create them as powerfully and as effectively as possible to differentiate my competitors and have impact uh, when I, uh, you know, reached, when, when I was live on the Amazon listing, right? And really Amazon is a competitive space for who really catches, it's a very highly competitive um, business model because you, you're, you're, you're selling a, a similar product in a sea of other competitors selling almost the same product. So really a differentiating point is the visuals. And I, you know, I was able to master that and that became my real success factor in, uh, you know, crushing it in Amazon, in fact. So what then that led me to be, to, to do is actually, you know, develop a passion to actually help other e-commerce businesses, e-learning businesses, and in fact, many digital businesses to then create those camp, create, uh, you know, take all my learning and all my know-how into, you know, helping them launch their businesses uh, online. And here's a little snapshot of some of the results that I was able to drive forwards. So I'm just gonna check if everything's okay in Facebook. Yeah, okay, cool. So here's some of the results that we would be able to drive forwards. Uh, and this, yeah, just a snapshot of some of our customer results. Um, yeah, Emerald Living, after a lot of uh, the work that we did for them to you know, recreate their product image listing for a, you know, they have a product line of, uh, uh, you know, you can say eco-friendly food containers where they're doing 75K monthly at a bestseller on Amazon. Kevin Lee Ho, uh, a good friend of mine and a client, been working with him for quite many years now. Uh, you know, he's the CEO of, of Office Oasis doing 150K monthly. What's interesting about him is that he's an engineer. So he actually builds his own product. So actually we do a lot of product research in the market of Amazon, try to differentiate on product first and then come out to, to, to market with really powerful visuals so that we can crush his competition. Uh, Marty Schmarka, she's doing 60K monthly on Amazon, 
simply selling you know furniture protection um, pieces. And really, a lot of this success was driven through a lot of trials and testing of my own to actually get success on, on my own product launches. And it really comes down to a very slim and narrowed down formula. Uh, if you guys, some of you guys may know, the product image formula is a handbook that we offer within the Glorify ecosystem. If you're a user, an early adopter, uh, especially a lifetime deal user, you would have got the product uh, image strategy formula. It really is the single most important design, research, ideation, and execution process that has helped hundreds of e-commerce entrepreneurs deliver high converting story-driven product images. Now, I, in this webinar, I don't wanna go deep dive into how the product image strategy formula works, but it is important. And as, an, as someone coming on, as part of this 2.0 launch, you are doing a lifetime deal, as you know, if you do jump in on, on board, on this offer, we do have a lot of VIP, um, you can say perks, uh, and one of them, including the, some of the bonus that we offer you, such as you know coming into our uh, pro Slack group uh, where you get access to our team, uh, you get the product image handbook, the 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 uh, uh, the uh, the special version, which includes which which includes a few extra um, uh, content in there, and as well as um, uh, you know being able to request your own bundle to be designed for in within the Glorify ecosystem. So you can actually request a template to be designed for you every single month, which is awesome. So with that in mind, you know, I'd, I'd encourage you guys to, you know, if you do jump into Glorify, use the product image strategy formula as your premise to actually build your product image sequences, make them story driven. And we go through the entire process in there in full detail. So I will not touch on that today, but this is really the success formula that has brought myself, my clients, a lot of people in the Glorify, um, community, a lot of success in their product campaigns. Now, I want to quickly touch on where we've been since last year, because it's been a, you know, like what I like to say, a very glorious last year. It's been uh, one year. Uh, and where did we start? I mean, last year we launched Glorify in 2019. We had 17 members, zero users, zero followers, zero designs made. You know, we didn't get out to market. And we were lucky enough in one year, we've been able to achieve all of this, you know, second product of the week, uh, product number one of the day. We were also nominated last year by as a best design tool for, of 2019, a nominee for the Kitty Cat Award uh, by Product Hunt. We now have 28 team members, you know, uh, 27,000 users, 50,000 followers across all our different channels, uh, you know, social media, email, etc. And we also have 260,000 design, designs made up to up to speed right now and that's been increasing or you know exponentially every single month uh, and just in the last month we've had 40k downloads of designs uh, within the glorify ecosystem super pumped super excited really happy that people are having a lot of value within using glorify now none of this could have happened with us uh, uh well <laughs> of course us but uh you know i want to give credit to our entire Glorify, glorious Glorify team. Who are we? We're a bunch of two cool for school, geeky entrepreneurs, designers, and marketers. We're, we are very action oriented and we love getting up, waking up with the passion, with drive to make things happen. Now, with also I wanna include in that is the Glorify champion users. None of this could have happened without them. You know, We have a loyal tribe of early adopters. You see them engaging in the community group all the time. And it we went for them, went for them, their feedback, their commitment to you know using our product and commit, commitment to the vision of Glorify, uh, we wouldn't honestly wouldn't be here. Now, this might seem like a lot, but it actually isn't. I think the biggest achievement is all the feedback we got from our early adopters. Uh, you know, we did this by using a public roadmap. You can see a roadmap at one of our, uh, if you go to the URL, start.glorifyapp.com forward slash roadmap, will take you there where you can see all of the features that are coming. But more than anything, you can actually see a table where you can suggest a feature and upvote people's features that people have suggested and we've approved. Uh, and this really helps because we know exactly what are your pains, what are your, you know, your demands of Glorify, of a entrepreneur first design tool. Uh, and of course, we did this organically. You know, it, you know we're humans after all. We want to speak one-to-one -one, and I love that connection that, that that's more special like forget data forget all that stuff is great but if you don't have that one-to-one -one connection with 
with you guys, with our with our community, then we'll never get anywhere. And we always do that. We are always closely listening to you know where how how our users or how our community feel about Glorify. What was important is we got really important answers to well important uh, answers uh, answers to important questions. You know, who are you? What are your dreams and visions? What are your pains and struggles? And what do you want from us? And one thing is certain, we need to support you in your journey as an entrepreneurial knight on a mission to slay a dragon. Now you might be asking me, what do I mean by slay a dragon, right? Well, you see, this is something in my own experience, and I'm sure you guys have experiences yourself. Yes, dragons, you know, every, every entrepreneurial or entrepreneur goes in this path of slaying dragons, right? And you can see the cycle of the self-fulfilling cycle, you know, especially if you have the grit and you have the ability to, can, to persevere and keep moving down that path, you'll find that you slay that first dragon, it gives you that self-motivation to slay the next dragon. You can see the cycle over here. And this is the cycle that we've built within Glorif the Glorify framework is, you know, you the first pretty advert that you design on Glorify, then, you know, using that ad, the first sale dragon that you slay, the first thousand dollars dragon that you slay, the first hire dragon, the first testimonial dragon, the first $1 million dragon, the first, oh my God, did all of that just happen? Uh, honestly, that's how my experience was like, like I, I started building Glorify. I had my design agency in 2016. I started, you know, building Glorify back then with the strong intent to help startups, you know, automate the process because, you know, I couldn't, I couldn't serve everyone as an agency, but I wanted to serve people at scale. You know, you let them have the image strategy formula, but, you know, inbuilt into a design tool and an ecosystem of learning and community with the design tool available. And I started building it in 2016. Every single year, I was just thinking to myself, hey, look, is this actually going to work out in my favor? I've got these titans of competitors, and am I kidding myself? But every single year, you know, I found some little dragon that I slayed, and that was my motivator, you know? And so it's these dragons, these paths of dragons that you go, um, that an entrepreneur will go through, and eventually they'll come, and they'll be like, hey, wait a minute, did that, did that all, of, all of that just happen? Uh, and and it's, it's just a beautiful feeling. Now, what we believe is a great design tool is, there, is your weapon in a, and shield in the battlefield. Now, Glorify is not just a design tool, okay? We believe where your, men, your, your Yoda, you can call it a mentor, a sensei, a teacher in your mission to slay dragons, okay? And, you know, how do we do that? We, of course, provide Glorify, a design tool, but we also try to do this. Even if you didn't jump into Glorify, we still have this ecosystem of learning, resources, education, and community, and we truly be, believe in that, you know? Whether you're selling physical, digital, or service-based products, um, Glorify will be your Yoda taking you towards glory. Now, to really achieve this vision, we, you, you, know, you know, anyone in this uh, live webinar right now, which of you guys are from last year's early adopter, um, you know, um, batch of users? You know, give me a shout out. I'd love to hear. I, I know a lot of you guys are in this webinar, but it's nice to see, it'd be nice to see which of you guys are in here. Um, yeah. And yeah, so you guys knew that when we launched Glorify, it was a great decision to come in early stage, but we had so much to build still to, to really fulfill that vision. So we had to really build, rebuild everything. And now this really is what, what we believe Glory looks really looks like. You know, we completely demolished everything. Not it's, This is not just a facelift. This is literally an overhaul, right? Because why we needed modern UI that was scalable for the future. What do I mean by that? Well, editor 2.0, it's faster and better. That's of course, any software, any plat a SaaS platform as it progresses needs to get faster and better. That's a given, but more importantly, intuitive discoverability. We don't want you to spend hours looking for things. Uh, you know, So we had one panel where everything is available. Easy for the non-designer. Of course, it needs to be Simple. If you don't have any design skills, there should be zero learning curve. And we focus on that. But what's important as well for us is to make it still tasteful. I'm a designer. And let me tell you something. I couldn't use or I didn't find it tasteful enough to, as a technical, you know, designer, people, you know, someone that likes the kind of advanced, more advanced traditional softwares like Photoshop and Illustrator and stuff like that, After Effects, I, could, I, didn't, I, I didn't resonate with Glorify 1.0. 
but 2.0 gives me that just that enough technical aspect and workflow that gives me that appeal. Uh, and so it's that, about getting that a balance where you know a non-designer can use it, but it's still uh, powered up for a uh, pro designer like myself, which makes it a great platform for you know both the non-designer and the designer to collaborate on. This is truly the vision of Glorify, not, not, but not just that, even just the dashboard 2.0 experience, we're trying to really give everyone a personalized experience. And we've got this machine learning in place where as you come in and you answer some questions and we record your behavior within the application, we try to show you the templates that matter to you the most, um, you know, based on your niche, based on your brand, based on the behavior in the app. And this is an ever improving algorithm that we're working on. But more than anything, the core print, you know, the core premise and purpose of Glorify is of course to create that first image, slay that first dragon. So you see this all the time. I've seen this since last year when we launched, you know, users come in, sign up to Glorify, get to that aha moment where they actually choose the right template, pop a product on it, customize it, or start from scratch. Like, you know, uh, Eusebio Sanchez in this picture is actually uh, notorious for starting from scratch, right? And he's great at it. Uh, but yeah, those are the, the you know, those options uh, available to you. But just to go into Glorify, find that template and just take action and get to this end result right here. This is really when the glory starts. If you slay that first dragon, you've 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 accomplished that your mission number one, and you've entered the cycle of you know dragon slaying, right? Um, now it's time to glorify. Now let's jump straight into it, guys. Um, I'm just gonna go in back into Facebook just to see what people are saying. Um, awesome, awesome, awesome. Lo I can see a lot of love. There is nothing like true love, I must say. And just a lot of different questions. Now, I will say one thing is that we will have a QA, Q and A at the very end of the session. Now let's jump into Glorify. Actually, let me just go in there. There we go. Right. Okay. So as promised, guys, we're going to go in and glorify some products. Now, I'm going to do two things. I'm going to, the, the, the agenda of this, uh, well, what I'm going to start, how I'm going to start my design process is I'm going to pick a template, a template that I feel is going to be the best match for the particular product that I want to create a design on. And then I want to show you how I can create assets at scale once I create that first template. I love it to glorify, of course, you have your common sizes, which is relevant to you. You know, whatever platforms you chose on your onboarding, we'll try to show you things that matter the most to you. But one of the best things, especially running an e-commerce business is the hero image. The hero image is a great center point to start off, especially when you're picking a template, because as you know, or you may not know, most of our templates are built into bundles, right? So if I pick a template, you can see there's an entire bundle, entire brand kit, if you will, of that very same style reproduced for all your different use cases and purposes in your campaign. Now, let me show you and reveal to you the product that I'm gonna be designing for. Let me find that very quickly. So it's called, um, Okay, there we go. So it's a it's a devil speaker, right? It's a uh, pretty badass, I must say. I found this on Alibaba, and I think you know, if I had time outside of Glorify, I would totally launch this product. I mean, who here wouldn't launch a product like this? It's just, it's just so dope, man. Um, but I found this and I thought it would be cool to create an image like this. Now I did show a reference. I did actually do a session with this very same product on, uh, on Facebook. So it's a little bit unfair, but I will tell you this once I, I want, just want to go through the design process once, and then I want you guys to pick a product for me that I will also create a, a very fresh and unique design on, you know, so you can put me on the spot if you like. Now, with that said, I want you guys to start actually doing that. Try to start finding a product. If you got one, don't spend too much time because I want to show you the design process now, but find a product on Alibaba, drop the links, and then I'll pick whichever one that looks the most interesting. 
please don't send me any dildos or anything like that. This is really weird. Don't, don't do that. <laughs> um, I shouldn't have said that, by the way. But uh, anyway, let's keep going. <laughs> All right. So uh, let's go to team. And yeah, so the best process of create, finding the right template as a match to your product is obviously using your niche uh, filter here. You know, if, if I'm selling uh, now the Bluetooth speaker being an electronics, I would no doubt go into electronics. Now, this is one way to find it, but you can also simply just go to theme and find the right theme for your, uh, for your, uh, for your product, you know? Themes are a bit more open. Now, what you should know is that templates are not limited to the product category. Like you don't have to find a template as a match of your niche. Sometimes it's just the style. I could very well use this pan here. And if I have some other kitchen product or even like some kind of home decor, like a clock or something, it could still work, you know? So themes matter. Niches also matter. So it just depends on how you, you know, uh, you know, where you get lucky in terms of finding templates using those different filter options, but it narrows down your option off the bat. Now, looking at my product, this little devil may cry type speaker, um, I would look, it's, it's got a very matte look. So I would go, when I look for a template before I used matte color and I found the perfect template for it, which is a lot of this could work, but in particular, this one looks pretty cool. Now, like you might, as you guys know, I would, I would open the bundle to check out the entire bundle. And again, what's super exciting about Glorify is that everything's recreated into a bundle. Well, we've tried to recreate everything moving forwards. Uh, some of the older templates haven't been recreated into bundle, but uh, ever since, ever since um, you know, we've made a commitment to produce, make every template part of a bundle where we're working on it at scale. So that's our promise to you. We'll go ahead and pick a HD banner. Now, HD banners are great for your e-commerce website, your online store. You can put it on a blog if you like, but it's got a very typical, the typical properties of a hero header of your main e-com product listing. Um, I'll go here and again, the process of Glorify is really simple. I don't, uh, you know, I try to minimize it to these few steps. Pick product, replace, go ahead, drop products in, Boom. Pick product that you want to replace with. Remove background. You guys may know the infamous background remover tool. Flawless in every way, shape, fit, uh, shape way, and form. Um, once that's done, you can do a bit of tweaking using the red line to remove bits that you don't want. So red line kind of, you know, it does the auto clipping or auto removal by itself quite well, but sometimes you might need to do a little bit of tweaking. And as you can see, I've done that. Click done, boom, jump, drop it in your template. Now, what I like to do afterwards is just crop this up to get it a much a tighter crop. So what I'll do is squeeze in these crops a little bit. A little bit. Um, to open this crop, crop window, you just simply double click or you choose crop on the left hand, the right hand side. Now, you, you notice the workflow on Glorify is really simple. Um, it's a very centralized workflow. It's honestly dummy proof. Everything, all of your assets are always on the left. All of your properties and tweaking and adjustments of any selected item on your canvas is on the right. All of your higher hierarchy features, your undo, redo, resize, resave, grid, we call these hierarchy functions on the top. Very minimal. There's not much going on on the top. Um, you know, and this really is a, a, a powerful workflow for design. You know, you, it, everything is always discoverable. Um, so I've got my product here. I just made a crop here. I want to duplicate this. Right click, duplicate, just one click away, or you can use, of course, use your keyboard shortcuts. I'll right click again, send to back. Okay, so now I've sent it this back. And the reason I want to do this is I want to move this crop, double click, move it over here. So I've got the back part of this product as well. So we can kind of show off, you know, remember in e-commerce, like product customers will only experience a product of, from what you show them. So you wanna give them a good 360 feet look and feel. Now that I've got this, I wanna kind of work on the details. Details are not hard in Glorify. If you wanna drop, if you wanna get a realistic shadow, just use the ground shadow feature over here, boom. Drop, down, drop the drop down and start to tweak the vertical distance, increase that blur all the way, nice and soft. And I would increase the scale on the vertical. Okay, so the vertical scale simply scales the shadow this way, the horizontal scales it that way. So if you see the horizontal will kind of go in a horizontal direction, which is what, what I don't want. Um, I simply want to work on the vertical scale. 
I'm happy with that. Little side note, we're going to be introducing a really cool feature soon. Like once you've done your cropping and everything and your little adjustments on the right panel, we're going to have a right click copy style and then paste style on another object. So it will adopt the same shadow, the same, you know, image adjustments that you've added, the same reflection, whatever other adjustments that you've made on that image will be just simply duplicate over and over. And right now, the workflow is uh, a bit longer where you have to still go through um, doing it uh, once more. Really excited about that one because this is going to be a massive workflow benefit. Um, I'm quite happy with those shadows. They're looking good. I think this needs to be pulled up a little bit. Okay, great. Now, always use the assets, the template, assets of the template, right? Um, try not to stray away too much from the template. The template gives you everything you need, and that's the whole point of the template. I often find people, you know, which is fine. It's, it's you know, I don't, you don't want to restrict your workflow, but some people just completely destroy the template and they start adding all these kind of stuff. Keep things clean and clean. Uh, it always works in your favor. Now I've got all these little icons here, which is a great inspirational point for me to now tweak this in and make it restructure the template to make it, uh, oh, redesign this template to make it more in theme of this product. Now, if you look at a devil product like this, a devil speaker, you clearly wouldn't have mathematic symbols around it from the previous product, which is a calculator. So what would be an obvious kind of iconography or little decorative elements on the speaker? Uh, I mean, I think there's some obvious choices here, but I wouldn't mind just to keep you guys engaged to drop some ideas in the comments. Uh, I will consider them, but I'll go ahead from now. Um, so th this is a text layer. So I've got this really cool um, widget or um, Chrome. I'm just gonna plug Joy Pixels. I don't know who they are, but they're they're really awesome Chrome um, extension where you can get access to all of these cool, um, uh, well, all of the emojis. So I'm gonna go and use something like guitar, boom, take that, drop it in here. Yes, uh, glorifies the emoji felt friendly. So that's pretty cool. Uh, let's find something else to do with music, perhaps like, yeah, the trombone. Oops. Sorry guys, I think I accidentally undid and then lost the guitar. Let me just do that again. Boom. Uh, and for these, you can add like a little thunderstorm, perhaps a thunderbolt of lightning, scale that bad boy. And we can just delete the rest of this. I don't necessarily need a lot of them. Uh, I've got these icons here. Icons are really cool elements. Uh, they give you all these cool customizing options, like you know, adding a container. So you can essentially, what you can do with icons, which is pretty cool, is like literally create your own icon style, you know, by adding a border and adding these little things and finding, you know, um, finding a container. And then once you style your, stylize your icon, in this case, of just duplicating it and replacing the icon. Now, I don't want in this instance to have a shape, but I want to replace this icon with something relevant. So I'm going to look for musical notes. Um, so this one will work. Boom. And we'll you replace this with something. So as when you click replace, the left hand side, as you can see, the panel opens up and you can just simply click something to replace it with. It's a pretty neat and fast workflow. If you ask me, might I say so myself? <laughs> um, okay, so I'm pretty happy with that. I'm digging it. I'm digging it. Have confidence, guys. Don't always doubt yourself. Self-doubt is a killer. Um, believe, believe in the process, keep going. That's what I would say. When I did this design before as well, I mean, like I said, this is a repeated design. Um, I didn't stop. The design process always helps when, yeah, of course, sometimes you need to think a little bit, but when you get into a flow state, it's, you always drive the best results. That's, that's my experience. Um, okay. I'm pretty happy with that. Looking good. Let's give it some directions. Cool. Excelente. All right, so there's my little musical notes. Now let's go ahead and customize the font. So uh, someone should be timing me. I shouldn't be taking too long to do this. Okay, so devil, um, let's call it devilish, devilish speaker. I think a cool font for this 
um, would simply be a permanent market, which is a bit of aggressive font. Now we will be bringing in a widget soon, um, which is API with Google fonts that will be available on the left panel here where you can actually find instead of you know having to know all these font names, which most people don't, we'll actually add the font style and theme. So you can have all these filters to categorize fonts like you know aggressive, um, you know modern, clean, slick, um, classic, you know those kind of things that then allow you to find the right font that's that's a match for the mood and feeling. Right now, of course, it's just a, sim a simple font dropdown, but we're working on that as a feature. Um, okay, so I've pretty much done all of that. Now, I'm, what I'm going to do is also go into yeah, pretty, I'm I'm pretty happy with that. Um, I'm going to go and re recolor this template to match. Um, actually, in fact, let me first change the background color to a gradient and try that. Now, when you recolor templates, uh, I always use this as part of my design process and it always works in your favor. Always make the product the guide of the entire look and feel of the template. I, I didn't say that before, but I'm reiterating because you can use the color picker to use the, the, the this is the color picker of course, and pick a color in the product, it always works. Um, now, if the color, you know, kind of makes the product get lost in the background, which in this case, it honestly doesn't because the product still pops, it still has presence. Sometimes it can, then you might want to find a slightly different shade to the same, to the product. But in this case, it doesn't, it works quite neatly um, with this product. But as you can see, that's the process I use. I pick a color within the product itself, the most, obviously the contrasting color that, that stands out. And then I use that as my background or some other elements in the design. Um, this one should be, I think what would work in this case would be like a white text and button, uh, text color, something like red, perhaps. Yep. 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 All right. So I'm happy with that. So this will be a neat hero header, I would say in, um, in your product listing. Let's get a bit of a brighter yellow there. Cool. Um, so let me know what your thoughts are, guys. Bluetooth. This. Now, these are little details, but because I have Bluetooth on the right hand side, as you can see, it doesn't make sense to make the button color white and this tag here, which is kind of informational, uh, like an informational graphic. There's no differentiating between this information tag here and the button. So it takes away attention from the button. So what I would do is simply make this a different color uh, so that it, it, it differentiates a little bit more. So I'll make it black. And there now the button has more contrast. So these kind of little nuances really help guide the eye of your customer. Um, so, you know, you might be thinking, Hey, do I have to be a designer to think of these things, but it's actually quite logical, right? Do you want the, the, the per customer to notice the little feature tag first or the button to buy order now, right? What do you want to stand out more, you know? And so some of these choices are obvious, you know? So, um, yeah, I think I am done. Okay. Sometimes I get carried away and I get into this little thing where I just can't stop clicking. <laughs> Um, hopefully it's a good habit. It's just that I can tweak and tweak forever, but at some point you should be happy. And I'm quite, I'm quite happy with that. Awesome. Okay. So let's move into the comments, see what people are saying. So Fra Frank, John, uh, throwing in some comments, uh, wish the color picker was located directly on the right panel. I just feel that, uh, Frank, I did actually, we actually had that as a possible option in embedding the color picker in the panel. What we realized is that people might want to have freedom to move the color panel around, you know, and then uh, also have these options on the right panel, not cluttered, you know, if that makes sense. So um, yeah. Okay, cool guys. Now I'm pretty happy with this. I am going to now go and start to the next phase, which is to create the rest of the campaign at scale which is the goal of this webinar. So once you've done that first web uh, ba banner, 
this is the dragon. I feel like I've slayed that dragon, that first dragon for this particular product. And this on my mission as an entrepreneur to launch this devil speaker, I've slayed the first dragon. I've created an effective banner that I'm really happy with that can go on my hero header. Now let this be the guide for all of your creative assets that you do move forwards with. Now, what's great with Glorify is you can create variations of scale. Just click pages at the bottom right, duplicate this, go to your next page, simply go into the color palettes tab. And you have all these color palettes readily available for you to now try out other looks and feel feelings uh, for this particular style. So if you ever have that itch and you're thinking, hey, look, what if it would look better if the background was white or a different color, then you've got these options one click away. So I'm gonna go into retro and try some of these retro options here. Okay, this slightly not exactly what I'm looking for. But pretty cool. Some of these things look looking pretty pretty tasteful, like in terms of the colors that the color options. I mean, even this looks pretty pretty awesome. I would keep this one. Move to the next one. Try another variation. Something with a bit more. This is more of a retro feel. The kind of retro kind of brings a slight dull feel, but still vibrant at the same time. Um, has a very like rust, almost rustic, but old and classical look. You know. Uh, something that's old that hasn't gone out of style. Um, I'm happy with that. I'm going to go to the next variation. Let's create some more of these things. And by the way, this gets really addictive, you know, <laughs> creating, creating these things at scale is just, um, this is pretty cool. I like the, you know, very sort of bright gray, if that makes sense. It's got a tint of blue and makes the gray feel very refreshing. Um, I like that one. I'm going to go to the next one. Let's try something really different, like a blue color. How would that look? This is even interesting. It kind of makes the product pop a little bit, right? So this is how easy it is to create variation. So imagine this was your ad set and then having to now split test, you know, make a hypothesis, say, would the color, would it perform better if the color was uh, more, you know, techy looking or more blue looking versus red? Shoot those two variations, always work with two variations and see how they perform. And then, and then uh, scale on one version of that. We do this in Glorify for our own ads and it always works. Uh, split testing needs to be a core principle and co core practice in your business if you're online. Um, you know, not only that, but it just allows me to really, you know, experiment and see, you know, what, what brand feel that I want to bring out to my customers with this product. Now that I've created one asset, all it takes literally for me to then create my other assets is take that first banner, duplicate it, go into resize. And let's say we wanna create like a Facebook square image or Instagram square image, click the option there and resize. I would resize on the current canvas, not create a new page because I've already duplicated it. Uh, and boom, just like that, you've got your resize version. Now. It is smart resize to an extent. We are working on a better algorithm to start to position your items in a better way, in a better, more co better uh, composition, if you will, so that you can do less pixel pushing when, once you resize. But at the moment, it does quite a neat job. What you just need to then follow up and do is kind of reposition some of these items. So what I tend to do is grab some of this stuff. What I'll do is take all these items, these little icons, right click and group them up so that I can, you know, manage them a lot easier. And of course, the little tag thing needs to go uh, way above at the top here, scale that up. There we go. So it's just a little bit of management after you do the resize, um, increase the font size and stuff like that. Okay, cool. I'm happy with that. 
we can then go ahead and create the story version of this size. So we'll go ahead and resize that and pick your story post resize. Uh, we can create a new page this time because I haven't duplicated it. Boom, there's your story. Again, through the same process. Most of it's pretty much done for you. Just gotta move things a little bit accordingly. Do we have a safe zone? We got a safe zone in place. So this is pretty cool guys. We have grids here. Some of them are coming soon. We've got the default standard square grid, but we also have safe zone for those that need it. You know, some, some, some uh, templates require safe zone where different elements in the UI of that platform will block parts of your image, Facebook covers, Twitter covers, LinkedIn covers. So we've added the safe zones for you guys already so that, you know, you don't have to spend so much time thinking, you know, worrying about, okay, my text going to be chopped off when you launch it. Right. So here is the safe zone for the story. So what I can go ahead and do is make sure that, you know, I'm not going above this area and then curating the content based on that. And I would always put the story button at the bottom, the call to action, because otherwise um, it just wouldn't look great. Like, and usually the call to action, you can put say order today, but usually it's like swipe up, I believe. Um, there you go. Align and flip in order, by the way, these are your main functions to move your object around the canvas. Um, really helpful. It's always tucked away in this little, these little drop downs here. So you got your flip and order basically to move it up layers and down layers, right? I use both. I mean, I can use the layer drop down here, or I can simply right click and choose layer up, layer down, center back, depending on my needs. Now that I've got my product here, I think it looks pretty neat, like in this kind of side view, but I think most story, uh, story uh, posts will have a centralized layout. Yeah. In fact, we can even make this move into one line. Yeah. In fact, I'm going to take this tag and right click group it. So then I don't have to keep multi selecting it every time. And in fact, I'm going to centrally lay out it up and take this and ungroup it and align central lane that as well, to be honest, that will work much better. Yeah, I'm happy with that. Align that to center and scale it up. Here we go. Now, if you hit option on your keyboard, you can actually scale as a centralized pivot versus scaling like this on the right-hand side, which is the common way of scaling on any canvas. Hitting Option or I believe Alt on uh, your Windows will make, or yeah, Alt on your Windows, correct me if I'm wrong here, guys, uh, will scale from center. Yeah, that's much better. Right, there's my story. I'm gonna then turn off the safe zone grid and I've got a, uh, you know, I'm, I'm happy with that and, and I know it's gonna perform. I mean, I know it's not going to, uh, uh, the content is going to be covered up by the UI. Okay, so let's see what's going on. Um, okay, well, what do we need to do next? I'm kind of lost here. I've just been lost in the create, creation process. Yes, the next part of this. Guys, have you guys been dropping links? Did you follow through on that task, that little homework? Well, it's not really homework because, you know, you're not going home and, you know, you're not taking a break to do that task, but did you do that task I ask you ask you to do, which is to find a product uh, that I can then drop into Glorify and customize for you right now? Let me see. Uh, and look, I've literally like I wanted to keep this webinar under one hour. It's ten minutes to that to, to under one hour, so I'm I think I'm I'm losing time. Guys, drop me a product on the comments. Someone drop me a product. We can be here all day. Drop me a product. I need a, I need a product ASAP. All right. Someone dropped that face beard grooming kits. Let's have a look at that then. Okay. 
by the way, this is what I mean by creating campaigns of scale. You create that first image, then you're able to create assets at scale. Um, included in that, you know, if I do, even if I'm doing my creative ad sets and stuff like that, my product image for my product listing on Amazon, it's the same process. Um, now, if you need more custom images, like, you know, because all of this stuff is kind of more ad oriented, then depends on depending on the purpose. Because sometimes you might need a lifestyle image, you might need a call out image, you might need a accompanying ebook for this very same style. Then what I would recommend is go on your template section and simply scroll down, uh, find the, obviously the same template I was using was a calculator, I believe, um, calculator. Cal later so this template here open the bundle icon scroll down and look for the ebook of uh, of that template let's say you want to create a matching ebook for this entire campaign then it's a simple case of literally finding the ebook um, then here's the front cover of that ebook the table of contents the section title all the stuff that we need all the good stuff and then using the same template and going through that same process you've done it before for a banner the template bundle is there for you so it's just a case of adding this to a new page, or you know, maybe you just want to keep this document for your ad set, save this document, du you know, duplicate it, and then um, you know, add the front cover of your ebook to then create um, your ebook basically. So if I go here on the assets panel, here's the ebook front cover. I can go ahead, go through that exact same process I just showed you, and diff now create the ebook cover, then the co table of contents, etc. etc. It's really that simple to create stuff at scales, scale, guys. It all comes down to that first, I believe, a hero, like something generic. Don't, you know, use the premise or your kind of source design inspiration, like as, you know, maybe a contents page of it for your ebook. That can't inspire the rest of the design flow or the art direction, if you will. You got to you you design something that is quite easy to derive style from. And I would say that could be an ad. A product, uh, a hero product image, or a hero header or banner that goes on your website. Those things are quite, you know, very hierarchy in, in terms of informing the customer or informing and directing the style of the brand. I hope that makes sense. If it doesn't make sense, uh, let me know. Maybe I need to rephrase that. Uh, okay, cool, guys. Let me jump into this little uh, product listing that a good friend over here uh, dropped. Um, sorry, guys. I think. A lot of super nice and kind people have dropped a bunch of products here and I ha I'll have to go with Ben Cleaver's choice because he was just uh, the most prompt and fast to do it. So you, you need to, Ben Cleaver, you get rewarded for that. So I'm going to go ahead and bring this uh, homepage over here. Let's have a look at that. Now saying that if this product sucks, I might have to choose someone else's. <laughs> Let me see. Okay, well, it's a, um, it's got lots of different products on here. Let me try to find something that you know what, these product images are not great, but that shouldn't be a limitation for me. I should still be able to create powerful product images no matter what assets I've been given, right? Um, wow, okay, I'm really trying to figure out which, okay, let's go for this beard oil. Um, Senor, you have given me a little bit of a, a slightly hard website to navigate for some reason. Like I can't click this product and go in there. Is this your website, by the way? First of all, if it's your website, it's a dope looking website, I'll tell you that. But it's not easy to navigate it at the moment. Maybe I'm just not doing it right. Let me see. Okay, here's the, the beard oils. I'm just really hoping and praying that there's a high res image. If not, it's fine. I think I still should be able to work with it. Um, cool, okay, that thatch face, I don't know how you say it, wild zest. Okay, let's go with wild zest. I'm gonna head, go ahead and save image. Um, clipboard, uh, I'm gonna talk about, by the way, guys, stay tuned because what's really important, I forgot to mention this in the beginning, but what's really important is I'm gonna talk about the roadmap of Glorify at the very end and then talk about uh, the lifetime deal and what you get in on for those who haven't jumped on the lifetime deal yet. Um, so stay tuned. Now, let me go into uploads. Uh, I'm gonna save this document as, Dev, devilish banner set and save that and we can go ahead and start a new template. I'm going to go straight into um, dashboard and pick a new template for this new product. So beard oil. Um, ben Cleaver gave me a beard oil 
site looks pretty awesome. Uh, I'm going to go ahead. I've got the image ready at the hand. I'm just going to go into the templates area and pick a new template for it. Sorry, guys, I think my stream and everything. OK, I've got my dashboard here, so let me go here. Um, again, I'm going to go ahead with hero here, image and let's pick something in the personal beauty and care niche, I would say. Okay. Um, Okay, so beard oil, the beard oil that you have just at face value and looking at the brand, it kind of gives me a feeling of rustic vibe almost. Um, it kind of reminds me of essential oil. So I want to pick something that's a bit more organic. It has this organic feeling versus looking to, um, yeah, it needs, to, it needs to look the part. So let me find, I'm just going to copy the image over here. Okay, so here's the product, guys. If you don't remember what it looks like, it's this beard all here. Um, wild zest. I mean, I think the blue bot color kind of clashes a little bit with the product itself. It looks a bit more medical oriented, but let's try to fix that by using the right template design. Um, I would go with something like this. It's got a slightly more rustic feel. Um, it's very modular and should be able to customize. It's a little bit feminine, but I'm pretty sure we can make it in make it a little bit more masculine, more beard-like. Okay, so let's use this. All right, we've got our product image in the house. First things first, click, replace, drag, and drop. There's a the product. Remove background. That looks good to me. Add it to canvas. Yikes, it's eight o'clock. I run out of time. All right, guys, I'm going to make a, I'm going to slightly change my plans. I'm going to stay around till 7.30, uh, sorry, 8.30, 8.30. Okay, there you go. There's a the product. Let's do all the good stuff. I think this one deserves a reflection, to be honest. Blur it up. Remove. We are going to work on a feature, by the way, guys, that will kind of fade out or feather out the reflection. I'm really excited about that because in scenarios like this, you can see that the reflection doesn't look great if it, uh, as you can see, drops into, uh, goes past this area, right? Um, so yeah, and I'm going to then give this, I think the font itself is fine. Um, did I, do I still have the detach branding? What was it called? Um, detach, uh, I think it was. Well, where's it? That. Thatch face group that no that fat man you gotta tell me how you say this brand's name brand name because I have no clue how you say it it's it's um uh, it's uh it's interesting that ch face that ch face I guess is that how you say it? that ch face um all right so there's not much of a brand identity on the site itself it looks quite generic there's just a green in the background. So I'm going to have to craft my own brand around this, just knowing very little about the brand itself. But what I will do is save the logo. Okay, the logo is a, a file format I can't use. So let's go straight into the template. That face. I think we should make it all caps lock, I guess. I think that was what you intended. Um, and we need some kind of icon that will make it beard like nice wait a minute is that the same icon right there that is insane how did that happen that that very much is the same icon did you use glorify to create your logo <laughs> 
Um, cool. All right. So let's go ahead and use that. Um, I'm just bewildered that 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 happened by chance. But anyway, um, maybe I'm overreacting. Okay, I think this layer is locked. So I'm going to, yeah, it is locked. So I'm going to unlock it. And by the way, sometimes that happens. Some of uh, our designs will have locked layers. And if that's the case, don't worry. Um, simply just uh, unlock and you'll be fine. Um, yeah, I'm going to use the keypad. I think that'll look good. And what else can we do? You know, in fact, I, I think I want to change this. I'm going to go add a container to it. There we go. And put it somewhere around here. Um, and give it some colors that make it interesting. And the actual background, hide these layers, go to shape color and pick boom that. Um, I think the beard doesn't deserve to be pink. I would have changed the, the core color of this template soon, but I just want to make sure that I'm in line so I can see how it performs in the current color um, look and feel at least with the border. Okay, cool. So I'm pretty happy with that. It looks pretty cool. Um, that kind of gives me my structure, my template. Then I would obviously go ahead and write some info here. Beard, beard oil. Beard oil, moist and will keep that stuff the same. And let's go, you know, in fact, this might look cool over here. Yeah, I think that looks cool. And in fact, I'll take off the reflection for now and just put a ground shadow. Put that up, vertical scale, increase the blur all the way. There we go. All right, that looks cool. Looks pretty dope. Um, scale that bad boy up. And let's bring that to the top, right click, layer to front. Yep. Okay. So I'm pretty happy with that. It kind of gives this nice little structure. The branding is a miracle that I happened to find the right icon in the first click. I don't know how that happened. Like mind blown. Um, it's meant to be the universe is on our side. God is on our side. Um, okay. So let's go ahead and do what we do best. Recolor this thing. In fact, let's go back to this and recolor the core first. So I'm going to go here and simply, like I said, always use the product as your reference point. So I'm going to go ahead and pick the color on the product itself. Um, this is not serving the product, the dark color. So I'm going to go really light. And in fact, I'm going to choose the background to be the darker color. Um, so it's got, they've got this kind of nice little maroon over here. Uh, because the product is all shadowed up, it probably isn't the original looking color. So I'll have to go and tweak the color a little bit to get it right. And then this needs to then go ahead and adopt the same one here. Then this can go ahead and become white. And these can go do that as well. So different variations. And this can be really great on social media as a, as a show off of your product. Um, it can be great on a marketplace listing like Amazon as your second image. You shouldn't be your first because you can't have, you know, graphics on your first image on Amazon, um, but things like that. So here's one. It's got a bit more of a rustic feel, um, lost a little bit of that feminine touch that you have here, which we need to kind of get rid of. Um, I mean, it's not overly feminine, but yeah. I mean, the other thing is make it just completely white and then use these... Um, Send this to back. This is all square things. Send that to back. Shift select a bunch of these allows you to select them all at once. And you can go ahead, choose a new color, black. I think the black looks cool. It kind of gives this, I don't know, it gives this, um, I can't really explain it. It gives this vibe, but I can't think of the exact theme, the words, uh, description is not coming out, but um, I like how that looks. Okay, cool. I'm going to try a few variations using color it because you got to try the color palettes. Um, it's a must, it's a, it's a must have to try it. Just, just if you, even if you're just having fun trying different variations, it's 
always worth just smashing these colors up um, because like you can see like these are like, it's just fun, it's just cool. Um, yeah. I would go more with the pastel options that are available in here because just because as you can see, the pastel options will be working in your favor uh, for this product versus like some of the more, like, I mean, we can try it out. It's just not gonna work, you know, the pop options or maybe the retro options might work, maybe. Um, definitely not these, but these some of these libraries we're gonna always, it's an ever growing library. This is a lot closer to what I'm looking for. This looks pretty nice, surprisingly nice. It's like, it makes it pop, gives it a very different feel. Uh, maybe it's a bit off brand, but nonetheless, I kind of like it. Um, even some of this red bold stuff looks pretty interesting. It, it, would, it makes the brand kind of pop a little bit. It has this nice contrast against the blue. So yeah, maybe some of these options might be cool. Um, cool, yeah. So let's try that again. And yeah. By the way, if you hear someone singing a lullaby way back in the background, that's my wife putting my son to sleep. <laughs> so I do apologize. <laughs> oh man, it's been a long day. All right, cool. So here's a bunch of the variations, guys. I hope you enjoyed that. Um, under, uh, I'd say about, I hope I, I spent about 10 minutes on that. We started at eight o'clock. So 10 minutes in, we've got three variations of this product image. I'm pretty proud of, uh, pretty happy, might I say so myself, pretty happy. Um, I'm a bit arrogant like that. Uh, okay, so let me go down and check out what people are saying. Um, will we get future? Okay, so 137 people uh, are st streaming live. It's awesome to see a lot of guys still stay into the very end because this is quite frankly, uh, the most exciting part, well, one of the most exciting parts of this webinar, because I'm going to talk about what does the future entail of Glorify in the next 10 minutes, hopefully. So let's jump into that. Just going to get out my slides. Sorry, guys, let me just get my slides up and prepared for you guys. <sighs> Excellent. I've got it up. Remember, guys, we are having a Q&A at the very end of the session. So stay around, stick around, stick around, stick around. Um, share screen. All right, let's get into it. Um, so the roadmap, the roadmap, where are we at with the roadmap? Let's just backtrack a little bit. Last year, we launched Glorify 1.0 at that time, and we had a very ambitious roadmap. Some of you early adopters know about this roadmap. 
It's really exciting. We had all this stuff that in line for you guys, everything from mockups, um, you know, animation, uh, you know, analytics, third-party plugins, and all kinds of a variety of rich features that we wanted to bring on Glorify. We still stand by all those features. We, we have strong intent to build every single one of those features. We took one year and we haven't built a single roadmap features up to speed, except those small improvements that people requested us from uh, requested from us. Why? Because we had to launch 2.0. We needed the entire two, two, year of 2020, all of our resource went into building 2.0, building a experience like you've just seen. That's just much, just much more powerful, more intuitive and set us up for this future. More than anything, the entire interface is scalable, meaning you can keep adding third party plugins. You can keep adding uh, new features that we want to relaunch and the interface will just never become more cluttered because as you've seen glorify is built into two panels your assets panel your adjustments and you can keep adding different settings on each you can keep adding a new library or new asset on the left hand side um you know just as i showed you earlier there's a, a couple of assets that i, I we, we can go into like some of the libraries we just launched recently was uh, ouch by icons eight which is a great library for illustrations for example we're able to just throw in these new libraries and integrations just because of how how much scale our left uh, assets panel has now with that said let's jump into where we are at the roadmap and what we are going to bring in the near future so let me bring that up so first things first improvements and improvements sprint so to december up to the end of december 2021 our commitment is to just work on the smaller improvements, okay? The bugs and of course the improvements and fix, people are requesting it. Um, uh, we, we get requests all the, all the time. Um, on our website is a clear area for you guys to request improvements and features and stuff like that. And even ask on, on our intercom support widget, chat widget, you can actually submit reports for even bugs and stuff like that. We're getting these requests and we're fixing them on the run and you can see our progress here. In terms of these little improvements and features, we've got 24 still being planned. Uh, you know, three MVP complete and we've closed and completed um, two so far uh, since we launched uh, last, it's been one month since we launched 2.0, I believe. Yeah, one month, um, just uh, early November, we launched 2.0. So this is a massive progress already, you know, we're killing the backlog and we're moving towards, you know, launching these features and working on them. It's five are currently in, 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 um, the in progress phase, meaning the UI and the, the entire workflow has been has, has been fleshed out and the developers are actually working on. So we're really excited about that. And some of these, and you might be asked, what is what is improvements in Sprint? We're talking about you know simple features that are no brainer that any design tool should have, like clipboard pasting. You should be able to copy something from a website, right click, copy and paste it on the canvas. You should be able to copy something on, uh, you know, instead of that flow I just showed you where you have to drag and drop it in the uploads panel. Uh, you know, things like that, you know, things like having more annotation styles, you shouldn't just have just round heads and arrow heads, you should have flat heads, you should have the ability to have, um, you know, um, uh, you know, uh, right angle corner annotations and things like that curved annotations, you, we need variety, if you, especially if you're trying to present your product in the most glorious form panel, uh, you know, these are really, really important. Um, you know, that the ability to download multiple pages, you know, super no brainer, you should have those freedoms, you know, uh, this is a feature that's coming soon, we're going to be, you know, the ability to have better library filters, if you're searching for an image on, say your icons eight integration, like the photo library, the, the photo creator library, we have the models, um, you know, you need filters to, to, for example, the models alone, you need filters to search by, you know, ethnicity, by gender, by age, and all those kind of stuff. So we're working on those better grids. So we're gonna have margin, safe margin. We have safe margin and we have just the square grids as, you sh as I showed you earlier, but we also have coming up in the pipeline is just your margins. When we do introduce print, they should be bleed. Um, you need grids for um, stuff like, um, yeah, so, so those are the main ones, right? We're also going to introduce rulers so you can actually have custom rulers where you can drag and set your own guys if you're more of a pro. Um, true font weights is something that's really important. You know, if you guys, if you guys are designers, you might this might make make sense to you. But you know, fonts come with true font weights, as in not forced bold. You need, you know, if Roboto has normal a normal a light a regular etc., then it also comes with its bold version. You know, right now we're forcing the bold version so that's what true font weights work it might be a bit technical for you guys but those of you guys who are familiar with this will understand 
point being is that the entire sprint that we're on is just towards improvements, right? The future is collaborative, right? This is something that, you know, collaborative features right now, you, some of you guys have bought startup plans, team, all kinds of different team plans. If you're on the enterprise, you've invited a bunch of your team members. You know, where are we at when it comes to collaborative features? It's quite, uh, the, the collaborative features are quite basic right now and some of them are in beta, right? You can invite team members and they can come in and work on and add a design, create a design and, 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 and do, all, do those kind of main tasks. But what's really important for us is to bring in live collaboration, eventually start to even uh, you know, have more advanced permission settings. So being able to set a team member to see a brand and not another, to be able to invite guests. We're gonna have unlimited guests, guys. So you can invite as many guests as you like, but guests will be limited. They won't be like a team member. Okay, guests are have many limitations where they can only edit a single design, but they can't access templates, they can't access your other projects. So guests are great to sharing with clients, sharing with stakeholders, you know, sharing with someone, a, a team member that doesn't need full access to your account, for example. And these are great uh, collaboration features and that we're really excited about. Um, the future we believe is really OCD organized. We already have tags. People keep requesting folders, but um, honestly speaking, uh, we, we're trying to strongly stay hold, stay away from using um, a folder specific design. I mean, we can design a folder system if it, and have people, a lot of people have demanded it, but we believe, you know, organizing versus using tags is very efficient. So if you set, you set a tag, you then tag your designs with it and you can filter out all your designs based on tags. I'm going to actually show you some of the UI features and how that's going to look in the future. Cause we're going to actually. Uh, make that a little bit more advanced for you guys so they can be really OCD with the organization, you know, tags for projects, search by teammate who have designed a, a design, your favorite library, your brand kit, etc. cetera. Um, next in line in terms of the major features, those are improvements that I showed you, but the main major features that we're going to be working on from February, June, 2021, all the way up to June, 2021 are three features. And we're going to have different uh, senior developers working on each of these features on a sprint, on a three month sprint, and then launch beta. Uh, packaging designer, being able to upload a die line of an e-commerce packaging that you might, if, you, if, if you're on an e-commerce business, you've got your product ready, you've most likely sourced uh, your packaging from your supplier, right? Uh, and so that would be uploaded onto your canvas that will then, you know, kind of, um, that once you upload it onto your canvas, it will guide the size of the canvas based on your die line. And you can start, we'll, we'll create a library of pre-compositions for packaging design specifically. So you can just throw that on to your die line. Mockups as well, which is really awesome. You can, you're, you're able to basically find these photorealistic models that you can use to mock up basic assets, such as, you know, bottles, packaging, t-shirts and stuff like that. We're working on that as well, where you can just drag drop things uh, or, you know, add things, um, um, designs onto these mockups so that you can create um, a mocked up version of your product. You know, anything from merchandise to mugs, bottles, things like the common things that you would want to mock up. Batch processing is really exciting. I'm really excited. We've been working on these flows for a long time. We want, it, we want you guys to be able to create one ad and then be able to multiply the scale of that by resizing that for all of your ad sets, because today you're advertising, you know, Google ads has like over a dozen different ad sizes, right? Um, you know, and then not to mention the other platforms like Instagram, Facebook, uh, Twitter. So you need to create your ad sets at scale. So we, you know, we believe that it's very much in interest of any entrepreneur to be able to do that, not being able to do, not just do it the way I showed you where you're duplicating, duplicating each page and then repositioning the items that stuff is great but really the power comes if you're able to batch process right so create one creative and then let that in, in uh, you know that that source that one design that you create becomes the you can say master file for then you to create multiple ad sets at scale just at a drop of a click now i'm going to jump into the full roadmap so we can kind of deep dive into some of the more things if you guys might have been here you can upvote features in this page or you can suggest a feature that'll pop that'll show up a form where you can start to suggest a feature over here uh, and that will come into our backlog. Now, these are the features that we're currently building, bit, being built. Uh, the 3D viewer by Sayduck, um, you know, we're still in negotiations with them on how, uh, uh, you know, when, when we're going to actually build that. 
Um, but main things are the Logo Maker 2.0. This is another um, company that we have, a partner company with a different development team that will be working on Logo Flow. It's a Logo Maker. Right, right now, you, you can see the Logo version. You can see Logo 1.0, 1. 1. Um, which is propriety of Glorify. But we thought it'd be much better if you got another partner company to build something and flesh something out that's much more powerful. Go check it out. It's great. It has a great way of generating a logo and then be an, an amazing editor tool that will edit the logo. You're getting, you as a lifetime deal user, by the way, will get this tool for free. It's it's just dope. Like, I don't know if you guys have seen the video, but it's just a simple process of, you know, entering your name, um, you know, yeah. And then describing your business, choosing an industry, choosing a style of your uh, logo or brand, choosing, you know, different things, checking out different options, and then finally checking out mockups and then editing them using our editor tool. I'm really excited about that one. We have uh, some other features we will go through. I spoke about team and guest permissions. Um, we, let me go into here. So we spoke about team and guest permissions. We have animation. Don't expect this anytime soon. You know, we're looking to start works and planning on it on in 12 months time. Um, live collaboration would be done at a later stage as well. And then we have smart components. We believe that again, entrepreneurs would need to be able to create something in the design and reuse that element over and over again without destroying the master of that version of the element. So imagine you create a composition like this, like a little sale badge, but you wanna use that very same design on many designs, but you would just wanna customize the text content on the color. So you have this master file, which is a smart component, then you drop it on many designs. And in that design itself, you can customize the text, customize the color, but the source or master file doesn't get changed. you know. But then if you wanna change the master file and globally change all your designs that have used that smart component, you can go to the master file, switch that up, and then all your designs change. Maybe you might have had a brand rebrand, for example, you know? So smart components are gonna be really exciting. Um, print templates, eventually we're gonna come and introduce print sizes. Uh, we showed you this, you know, being able to have advanced permissions for your team members, you know, giving them specific access. Um, new share integrations. I mean, we've, our share integrations are quite scarce right now. We have Facebook, WordPress, and a couple of these, but of course we need, we're gonna, we're working on working with the partnership with Shopify. Uh, Slack, LinkedIn, and the rest, you know, some of these no-brainer integrations that we need. Global brand kit features are awesome. Like imagine being able to set your brand kit as you can do already in Glorify, but then any editing you do on that, maybe your brand colors have changed or something has changed in your brand. That you can go to your brand kit as in the source, change that and your and all your designs globally change just uh, because you've, you've, you know, you've had a little bit of a change in your brand, your, 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 your color scheme or, or, or whatever, right? or the icon, et cetera. Uh, drawing tools, you know, we, like I said, in the beginning of this webinar, like we want Glorify to truly be a perfect balance between a non-designer and designer tool. You know, I'm a designer and I'm finally starting to love Glorify after the launch of 2.0. When we had 1.0, it just felt a little still a bit too dummy proof, a bit too babyish for me. Uh, like many other generic design tools that are out there, you might know some of the, the big C's and stuff like that, right? But um, Really, our mission is to make it super collaborative. It's just imagine you as an entrepreneur, you're able to use Glorify and you can create your design assets because it's user-friendly. But that's not to say that you can't invite your pro designer and he can find the exact, all the features and power he needs to do the advanced stuff as well. So it's that beautiful balance that we're trying to create. So we will bring drawing tools like the pen tool, pencil, polygon, stuff like that, right? These are very design-oriented tools that every designer would need. What I'm really excited about is, yes, Glorify will have native tools. We'll never go above those native tools that we have, but we still want people to be spoiled for choice. And we love the ethos and philosophy of applications like Slack and Intercom, where they have a third-party marketplace and third parties build all these cool features onto. Glorify, because Glorify is so scalable now, we are able to introduce a third-party marketplace. And we would love to introduce this in uh, anywhere up to eight months starting the work on the third-party plugins because we have actually a list of close relationships and friendships that we built with other SaaS founders that are eager to create integrations with us, uh, say Duck being one of them, right? So imagine being able to have a plugin store where you can one a drop of a click, sign up to their platform, uh, get any tool that you need to be embedded into Glorify, your Glorify ecosystem, such as analytics, productivity, uh, design tool, stock integrations, right? 
um, you, you know, one, one great thing that we're in negotiations with for analytics is we, there's a platform, I can't name them yet, but they do heat maps for images. So you can see if, if you generate a heat map for image, you can see where the hierarchy based on that heat map is and where do people see, where would people look at first on that image, right? So imagine how powerful that is. So with this, this company does AI generated heat maps for images. We want to create that integration so that drop of a click, you can, you know, sign up to their platform, you know, um, of course the payment will work for that platform because it's the third party, but then you will then introduce that into Glorify, your Glorify ecosystem, click your design project, choose the analytics option that opens a pop-up and shows a nice heat map of your image, you know, things like that, you know, so it's, it's really exciting. Uh, um, portfolios is something I want to, we, we really want to do is being able to have designers list their creations um, in, in, in public on, on the Glorify website uh, and also, you know, customize those URLs and stuff like that. Uh, analytics, I did mention this, you know, we want to rig up Google ads and Facebook ads API into our images to bring the data back to your creation, your ad creatives. Some new integrations they're working on on Splash, Giphy, Icon Scout, Ouch has already been released. As you guys know, it's a big uh, illustrations library. Uh, courtesy of Icons 8. Uh, really excited about these integrations. We will work on a light and dark mode. Uh, personal libraries, uh, Adobe Cloud have an open API, Google Drive, Dropbox, and the rest. Uh, you know, we want to, if you have images there that you want to then bring into Glorify your canvas and start designing, then there should be an easy way of, to, of doing that, right? Um, uh, HTML5 format is going to be awesome because if you create a banner, like you show, I showed you creating a hero banner, you should be able to get that in code drop that code on your website, WordPress website and have flesh out an entire responsive banner, you know? And so this is something that we'd love to do. Honestly, the more, as we start to go down here, some of these features we're looking at, uh, you know, year two to 2020 to be a 20, to, to 2022. So uh, 22, basically year 22, um, you know, because we're kind of diving into some, you know, so, so these are the main features that we're gonna work on this year. And then the rest will be coming uh, as, uh, as we move on. Uh, carousel view is something we'd want to do as well. Uh, I hope I do anticipate this could be done earlier, but we don't have a timeline yet on it yet. Uh, but we do want to have the canvases side by side. I think that's a very common use case for anyone designing. In fact, whether you're creating a carousel or not. So I think it just really inform you guys when you're creating a carousel and it kind of is a double edged sword. It'll, I mean, not a double edged sword. It's a clean two birds with one stone uh, situation, right? So uh, embed code content. You should be able to embed. HTML content on your canvas and the Glorify Academy is something we're still working on. We've done some content on it yet, but this is the exciting roadmap that we have in store for you guys. And we're really, really pumped and excited to deliver on these things. What you'll expect, like I said, is the next, the coming up next and very soon you'll start to see ETAs. Um, like I said, none of the stuff we could have done ever done without your support. So again, massive thank you. We truly believe that this is what will create, you know, finally create a design tool built for the entrepreneurial world of today, you know, give you all the things in one place to collab, to start solo and grow as a team uh, in one ecosystem. You guys know, for those of you guys who are here already, um, give me a shout out, uh, you know, tell me what, what you guys think in the comment. Uh, you know, your co questions are getting compiled as we speak. I'm going to start to answer those questions in a moment, but we do have a lifetime deal, right? Most of you guys are aware of this. 93% off, you know, you get the, the base price, which is the solo plan starts at $97 alone, which is a massive steal. Considering the roadmap, considering what we've built already, forget the roadmap, what we've built already and what I've showed you, demonstrated to you, to you it's a massive steal. We still, we, we are limiting our lifetime deals to 10K licenses alone. And we've hit a massive target already. Uh, and very soon, before we hit the 10K in first, in fact, we want to increase the prices, um, you know, and, and we haven't set a date for when we increase the prices just yet. But since it's Cyber Week, we're still prolonging the deal because we have just under a thousand lifetime deals that we want to distribute just at least for this week. And it will be, you know, I really encourage you guys to jump on this deal while it's available, you know. Um, we haven't made a strong decision to, you know, to, to close the deal just yet, but if it hits that, which it most likely will, as you know, we're getting, we're getting customers jumping on Glorify every single day. It most, most likely will hit the target of a thousand licenses for the, for the cyber week. Once we hit that, then we may most likely close the deal and then 
uh, increase the prices, you know? So it's that thousand licenses that we wanted, we're eager to distribute this time. If you haven't jumped on, jump on, uh, check out the lifetime deal page. Just simply go to www.glorifyapp.com and you'll, you'll get access. You'll, you'll check out every, all the different perks that you get inside the lifetime. Deal. Some, 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 some things that are really awesome about the lifetime deal, in fact, are the extra perks that you get such as the bonuses. I mentioned this in the beginning of the webinar, you get a free handbook that comes with your Glorify account, which is a sort of the special edition of our product image formula strategy compiled in, the, in, in a handbook, ready for you guys to take action on uh, and create powerful product images. And we also, some of the perks include, you're able to suggest one template bundle to our design team every single month. And you get access to the Pro Slack account, which then gives you complete access to our designers and uh, you know relevant members of our team, and of course the community. Yeah, so if you if you're ready to glorify your products, guys, um, this is your chance. Jump in on this deal while it's available. It's, like I said, it's ninety three percent off. This is considering you know taking a lifetime deal, deal span. Okay, if you consider lifetime deals to say you know, a benchmark to be five years, then that, you know, would be in the thousands and thousands of dollars of value. We're reducing that to a 93% discount offer for this specific lifetime deal, which drops the price to just $97 on the solar plan, $197 on the startup plan, and $397 on the enterprise plan. It's a massive steal. Go to www.glorifyapp.com, jump in while it's there. Now, guys, thanks a lot for being here. It's just been awesome to connect with you guys and be with you guys today. I'm going to go and check out what people are saying in the comment section. I've got a list of, list of questions that I need to answer, I believe. I'm just going to go ahead and find where those answers, those questions have been dropped. Um, okay, let me see where Senor... Um, Mm-hmm. Okay, where are the questions at? Okay, guys, we're doing a Q&A right now. So uh, I'll be on for another 10 minutes on Q&A and then we're going to drop. I think I've went way over time, spent too much time waffling, I think. So... Um, yeah, while you guys are on here, let's answer some of those questions. Uh, Daryl, you bought the two-year plan for the same price as LTD. There is a way to rectify that. Uh, anyone, by the way, on a two-year or three-year plan, okay? We and we sent out an email. You might have not got it for some reason. Um, if if you if you might have if, if just double check if you whitelisted us because you might have skipped your inbox. Now, anyone a two year three year plan is very simple. Get in touch with our support team. They'll then give you the opportunity to pay the difference to upgrade you to a lifetime deal. Okay, because it's unfair if you bought a two year three year deal. I think it must have been we we're doing that campaign a couple of months ago where now we're doing a lifetime deal and it doesn't make sense that, hey, look, I'm stuck on these two-year deals for the next two years and I'll, I'm, I'm short of a lifetime deal. We're not going to do that to you. Get in touch with our contact uh, support team and they'll help you uh, upgrade to a lifetime deal. It's a very small difference that you'll end up paying. Sometimes it's negligible and we just upgrade you anyway, right? So um, I have to be creative because I'm a coach and therapist. So it's not product-based per se. Any ideas to, about good template to start with? Good question, Marilyn uh, Devonish. I believe, I remember hearing you speak, I think it was in Tracy's group recently, where you said that you're a yeah, coach and therapist. That's what you said. Something to do with mindset, right? Um, what I can tell you about, tell you clearly about, is that we will be doing um, a lot of stuff on kind of the service niche and digital products. Within digital products, if you're a mindset coach and your part, your business is mainly digital, then I've got some good news for you because we're going to create course templates 
and also podcast templates, right? So content-based templates. I would assume that a lot of, you know, mindset coaching and stuff like that would be educational more than anything. This will be considered in our perspective, a digital product. So when we launch the digital product category, we'll have a bunch of niches within digital product. And some of them include personal development, by the way, uh, you know, medical, personal development, fitness, cooking, et cetera. So those, uh, and we classify them as products. You know, what you're offering is, is also a service, but it can also be packaged as a product. So, and, and we would say a digital product. So um, those templates will be available. We're looking at a three months time to start, uh, you know, really populating the digital product side and the, the service-based side. Hope that answers the question. To submit a template idea, Nikki Montgomery, it's really simple. Um, get in touch. If you signed up to the lifetime deal, you would get access. You get an automated messages, a message in your account and by email to come into the Slack group. Once you come to the Slack group, there's a channel called Template Suggestion. Drop your suggestion there. Type, uh, tag. Uh, 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 tag our one and only creative director, Senor Nico. He'll be available for you. So just tag him or tag one of our team members. Tag me if you like, and we'll get back to you really soon when we can um, start designing uh, that template bundle for you. <sighs> Ferndale, that's, uh, yeah, I don't think we'll go down that direction because we want to keep it exclusively for content creation versus website creation website is very complex what i can tell you is that we do have plans to introduce html if you do in, do, do it, introduce html the furthest we could consider going is making glorify also support creating um email design you know like the entire actual email design because it'll support html then you get the code the the, the html code or css code and drop it into your email um your email clients. This is again, way in the future. We're talking past 2022 because we've got a bunch of milestones to accomplish first. But once we do introduce HTML, there's nothing that we can't do afterwards, but we won't go as far as making it a website building platform. You know, I wouldn't say that. Um, Karima El Bordi, you just bought the three-year plan. I just uh, so I just explained if you didn't hear me before that three-year, two-year plans can switch to the lifetime deal plan by paying the difference. Uh, it's not going to be hard for you. Don't worry, we'll, we will make that easy for you. Now, uh, one thing I would say is that it's strange that you're able to buy. It. If you have you just because from what I can see, you said you just bought it. Do you buy it like very recently because we don't have those pages for three-year, two-year, three, uh, two-year, one-year, three, uh, three-year discount offers available right now. So you would have bought it, I think a couple of months ago, if I'm not mistaken. If you did, that's absolutely fine. You can, we can get you uh, upgraded to an LTD. I think the difference is very small. Um, I'm trying to go through these questions. Okay, the questions look like they come to standby. Most questions are related to sales. Anything to do with the product or the purchasing or the price uh, or the plans. First of all, I would encourage go to www.glorifyapp.com. Click the banner, the Cyber Monday banner or the Cyber Week banner. It'll take you to the Lifetime Deal page. Once you're then there, uh, make sure you do check out... Um, uh, you know, Make sure you check out all the information on that page so you know exactly what you're getting, Right. Um, and if you have any questions, our support team is always there available for you guys, right? So things to do with plans, I'll try to move through and then we can kind of speak about other stuff. Let's take a look at what other, what other people are saying.
Michael Whitstock, uh, speak to Ray about where you can get the free ebook. Um, however, I would say that you should have got an email or an in-app pop-up that will give you all your bonuses. It's automated. It comes about one or two days after you buy the lifetime deal. Just to make sure that you know you don't come in and let's say one day later you decide to refund or anything like that. You know, however, if you decide to refund afterwards, you can keep the bonuses. It's totally cool. Uh, but, you know, we do give that little buffer time because 90% of our customers will stay, once they stay past the second, third day, they're there with us for um, the entire journey. So Adam Shrum, any plans to wrap text around a circular product like a wristband? Now, this comes in mock-ups. Now with mock-ups, there'll be objects, predefined objects by us that we'll, we'll give you access to like bottles, packaging, t-shirts, hats, you know, merchandise, all kinds of stuff, any devices, laptops, mobiles, stuff like that, where you can then add your own design to the screen or the, to the customizable element of that uh, mock-up, right? Uh, in terms of a wristband, you know, that's not, not a very common uh, object that we would consider to recreate into a mock-up for you, but we will have a se separate section on mock-ups to request a model, you know, like a physical model that you can use uh, that can be work in favor for you as a mock-up. Uh, if it has general appeal, then we will definitely consider it. All right, guys, I think we're coming to an end now. Um, people are slowly dropping off, which is... Great. It's been awesome connecting with all of you guys. Philip, uh, Philip is asking three integrations, content studio and story, story chief. I'm not available. Uh, I'm not sure what story chief is. I've heard of content studio. Again, all this stuff in terms of integrations with other platforms is all subject to suggestions. So you go to our roadmap and suggest a feature. If it gets enough upvotes, we'll consider it. But we still have a bunch of backlog integrations, mind you, before we consider kind of these additional ones. And the, the, the major ones are very common ones that is a no-brainer, like you know, Dropbox, Google Drive. Um, mail, we've got MailChimp already and stuff like that. So Michael, uh, if you, uh, so someone saying uh, Zoc, uh, Jolly. Yeah, if you want to change your two-year plan, you got to get in contact with support. That's the only way. We've got to manually do that for you. There's no automated system for you to do that. So just spend, if you can spend, uh, spare some time during the day, any day of the week, except the weekend, most likely we do have some support members there, but it'll be slower. The weekday, just get in touch with us uh, via this in-app support chat and tell them to switch you over. Okay, so Jonathan wants to know about the lights I use in the background. Uh, yeah, just just uh, a few LEDs, quite quite basic to be honest. I might do another video on that one day. <laughs> uh, Manoj, you said you you bought the LTD in one point one. You would have got the ebook. Um, you got to check your emails, man. But if you haven't got it, then just ask support to send it back, send send it to you. All right, guys, with that, I mean, let me tell you one thing. I just did a very quick demo on Glorify. There's so much things that I didn't cover. I just showed you very the very basic features. There's things that we, other things we have. We have annotations, ability to add image into a shape. Um, you know, we have, we, I showed you a little bit about the icon features, you know, could be being able to customize icon into different icon style sets, um, being able to use effects. Like, you know, we have like, we have lightning, thunder, fire, a smoke, um, flares and all kinds of different effects that you can throw on your product to just make it sparkle. All that stuff is there and available. I just didn't have, you know, we're not going to necessarily do it today, but um, go and explore that stuff, you know, uh, just mess around, play around. And I encourage you to share your creations on the Glorify community so we can all get inspired and create this nice atmosphere of sharing, caring and inspiring each other. Right. Uh, with that guys, I am going to sign off it's been a little bit too long of a webinar i try to keep these things everyone keeps telling me keep it on the one hour you can do it and i always end up waffling a, a little bit too much before i can actually shut down uh and uh, close okay so with that said guys i shall be dropping off 
um, thanks a lot for being here. You know, it's been awesome. And I look forward to, to see if you're not, if you're sitting on the fence, I look forward to you, you know, coming on the other side and, and jumping into Glorify. If not, then still be part of the community and benefit from the content that we're going to shoot out, um, in, in, you know, everything to do with design and e-commerce and all that good stuff. So stick around. Um, and all of you guys who've been there since for quite some time or, or very recently, massive thank you. Uh, goes out to you guys for believing in us and and supporting us at this early stage. We've got a big mission to accomplish, and I love that you're taking part in that. So, uh, on behalf of the team and I, massive thank you uh, goes out to all of you guys. And yeah, I'll catch up with you guys in the community. Take care. <laughs>